Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark Spencer. I'm here with Steve Martin. Hey, Steve. Good to see you, Mark. And we are here once again exploring this uh, amazing, bizarre, fascinating uh, new world of Fonica Pro 10. Yes. Uh, any more adjectives you'd like to throw in there? Well, we'll see where we get today. Um, <laughs> I'm still, my brain is still exploding. I'm still wrapping my head around it, um, but I'm enjoying it. It's, a, it's really, really fascinating. So where are you going to take us today? Well, we've already looked at uh, importing. We okay. looked at um, keywording and organization, and events. we looked at projects. So events and projects, these two sort of right. foundational pieces. Right. Remember, we, the, the, the model is we, up here is organizing, playback, and editing. Three, organizing, three, playback, and, and editing. editing. Okay. So what we're going to do is start editing today. We're going to look okay. at basic editing. So what we're going to need to do is bring up a project. I'm going to go ahead and open a project that I, uh, I created previously. And I, uh, what I'm going to do is just select the project and double click it, and it will open in its own timeline. So you can Great. See there. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, close the. Uh, it's, it's called the media browser for now to give myself more room. Okay. okay? And uh, a lot of the keyboard shortcuts, a Shift Z will do a fit to window of the clips that are already there. You can zoom out, you know, command minus, command plus, a lot of the familiar keyboard shortcuts. Those all make me feel a little more cozy. Yeah. Well, yeah. you want to, you want yeah. some continuity between uh, Final Cut Pro 10 and Final Cut 7. Um, as you can see here, I already have three clips uh, placed in the timeline. We're going to add some more in a moment, but I just want to quickly show you that you have what's called a playhead, um, which is a, a legacy uh, feature of Final Cut. Pro, okay. where you can you can you drag your playhead over the top here. You also have something that's unique to Final Cut Pro 10 called a skimmer. And if you're coming from iMovie, you're already familiar with this. And it's essentially a means of quickly going through your shot. Notice I'm not clicking and dragging. I'm just dragging. I'm just just dragging my mouse pointer over the clips, and I get instant feedback in the viewer. Okay. So when you when you held your mouse down on the top of the playhead, that little triangle, right? It it moved the playhead, and it shows whatever clip the playhead's under. It's showing in the viewer. Correct. But then when you just move the mouse all of a sudden this thing pops out of it. Right. Now, this, this, this may be a little bit confusing for new Final Cut Pro users because essentially you have two reference points. You said you have a playhead and now you have a skimmer. Yeah. Okay, so well, here's the thing. Um, watch this. I'm going to move the playhead to, let's see, this frame. Right. I'll, I'll move it to this, this battle scene right there, okay? And now I have a skimmer, but now I'm over here. Now watch what happens when I move my mouse out of the timeline. Watch, what, what, watch okay. the frame in the viewer. It, it jumps back to the playhead. playhead. Right. So the playhead is now the main reference point. Okay. When I move back in, it's where the, where your mouse is at the skimmer position. Ah, okay. And that might be a little confusing, but that's really important to understand because it's the playhead that's going to be used for your edits. Okay. Just like the old Final Cut. If you wanted an insert edit to happen here, the playhead would be part you'd want to park it at okay. the point at that frame. The skimmer is just a way to really easily preview something yes. before you select it or work with it. It allows you to do a lot of things. Again, I only have three clips, but can, you can imagine having you know hundreds of clips. You can quickly you know get through uh, and, and see content in a matter of seconds. It's a very fast way of looking for footage. I notice also just as I'm moving the mouse around, like, there's constantly all this updating going on in the viewer as I happen to drag over there. Can, if, you, if you wanted to turn it off, could you turn it off? You can absolutely turn it off. There is a button over here. and. Uh, until you understand the relationship between the two, you might yeah. that might you know be a problem. You can just turn it off and just work with the playhead. Okay. One thing you do need to know about the play, playhead that's different than the skimmer is when you're using the playhead, you don't you don't hear any audio. You can't scrub oh. audio. That's the difference. But when you do have the skimmer on, uh, you can you can scrub the audio. And I don't even know if we have audio output set for this, but uh, looks okay. like we don't. But if you're skimming, yeah, uh, you will get. You'll actually hear the audio come. If you want, you could still turn uh, the audio scrubbing off. You can. Even while you're skimming. Yeah, you can actually notice here there's a uh, button here, and it uh, turns off by default. It's Shift S. But notice here. Uh, audio skimming. There we go. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the mic, the mics are picking up the skimming. Okay. But yes, yeah, so now, now you're here. But notice with the playhead, silence. Silence. The sound of silence. Uh -huh. Right? So that may take a little getting used to. I'm going to turn off the uh, audio skimming. But then again, a little getting used to. It's a little bit different mm -hmm. than what you're used to. But I again, I think it's very powerful, a great way to move the clips. You can use your up and down arrow keys, just like you can in Final Cut Pro 7, as I mentioned. J, K, and L. We looked at that. You can use your J, K, and L to, 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 to uh, quickly get the clips. And then your up and down arrows jump to edit points. Jump to edit yeah. points. OK. See that? Um, so it's, it's, it's fairly, a fairly fast matter to get. Um, around the timeline. Okay. Now let's look at adding a clip, okay? Because um, 
we've already add three. Let's go ahead and, and add another clip. Okay. okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to my interviews, man. I'm going to pull up an interview. Let's go to uh, let's go to Dave, and uh, this guy's talking about. Um, Actually, let's go to Bobby's a little bit shorter interview. Let's play this a little bit. I try to tell true. I try to tell true. So I try to tell true. Now I can notice why I'm not being able to hear it because I have skimming turned off, no scrubbing. So remember, I said you could uh, yes. shift this. You, you want to do that to be able to find your audio cue points. Yeah, See? I, uh, so you're not clicking now. You're just I'm dragging. Just dragging, the mouse. dragging across. Yeah. And I press I to set the in range endpoint. I try to tell true. Authentic stories. Out. You Press O. Uh, so you used I and O. Before I know. you dragged to make this, and, and you're no longer marking a clip, right? You're, like, you're creating a selection. You're creating a selection. Okay. Right. So, and you, you know, you have your selection there. You could use different keyboard shortcuts to preview it, like the forward slash key. So you, I try to tell true, authentic stories. See, it just plays between okay. the selection range. That right. would be the forward slash key, slash question marks key, okay? But now you can get that clip into the timeline two ways. You can obviously drag and drop it into there, but we're not gonna use that. We're gonna use these new these new buttons here on the toolbar. Okay. Di different buttons here. Let's see what we got. What we have is a button called connect, uh, the selected clip to the primary store line, insert the selected clip to the primary store line, and append the selected clip to the primary storyline. The, the selected clip is the one, of course, that's got the selection boundary on yes, it. Yes, um, Let's say we wanted to simply put this at the end of the clip. Okay. We would want to use the append. And what that does is literally take the clip and sticks it on the end of the project. Of your whole project. The whole project. Pops it over there, okay. And there's a keyboard shortcut button. But uh, in, the neat thing about this button is when you append, it's going to ignore the play edit. And it's an append edit. Ah, That's where so you get a little even confusing. if your play had sitting here, because you, you know you might be used to if Final Cut Seven, you're going to do an overwrite or an insert. Right. Always at the playhead location. Always at the playhead. But a pen says, "Throw me at the end, no matter where." No matter the what. Is. In fact, let's do it. Let's go ahead and do it. Boom. See, Structure. automatically throws it at the end. Wow. And what's nice is about that is it perfectly aligns it with the end of the clip. There's no gaps. There's no little black frames. It's just right. like boom, right. butts it up there. Nice, nice. What we used to call a butt slice. So Okay. Oh, sorry. That's what we used to call them. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to keep going here. All right. <laughs> so if you're building your rough cut and you're just trying to like take I'm clips sorry. and like, like <laughs> anyway, yeah, what were you're you just saying? sort of um, where were we? Building a rough cut, right, 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 right. So you're marking your clips. You can just hit I and O and use this append. And there's a keyboard shortcut for that as yeah, well. Yeah. In fact, if you park the mount your mouse over, you'll get a tool tip. And you can I'll see it's you. the E. Okay. E for, for end. Append. Right. right. Now, if you did want to insert a clip, I'm going to go ahead and use my up arrow key to. Um, so let's say I did want to insert a clip between two shots. I'm going to go ahead and grab another, you know, may, maybe a piece of, I'll go get some battle footage up here. Maybe I want to get uh, uh, these cannon, this cannon shot in here. So And you're um, using your smart collection I, I'm used, so you know all your battle footage is collected there. Exactly. Okay. Um, in fact, I like this one better because it's a little bit closer. It's a, a nice more close-up of a cannon firing. So like right here, right about here, I'm going to set an end point. Plus, ready? place an out point. So I want to use that little section of the cannon firing. And notice where my playhead is. It's parked between those two, right? Right. So I can then use this button, you know, called insert. Okay. I can insert the whole clip and notice everything moves down. Right. And it, and it used the playhead location as the insert point. Uh, and if a playhead was in the middle of a clip, it okay. would split that clip? It would split the clip in two. Now what it, what I see where it gets really interesting, and we'll end with this, okay. uh, is that if you use these buttons, mm -hmm. it always honors the playhead. But it's faster. What if now? I just want to show you something. Look at the shortcut for this. Is what W? Right. Keep, keep that in mind. Okay. If I'm going to use the shortcuts, it uses the skimmer position, not the playhead. That's so. Watch. So if I wanted to insert that right there, what did we say the keyboard shortcut yeah. was? W. W. Oh, it inserts at the now skimmer. It to the skimmer, which is kind of cool, right? Because if you're moving the skimmer along and you find the point you want, you don't have to click to move the playhead exactly. over. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's a it just, huge time saver. Yes, yeah. yes. So that's something people need to see. That's, that's a powerful yeah. time-saving feature. And what if people haven't done, if you're coming to this not having done a lot of editing and you're like, huge time saver, it's one click. When you're, it's a huge time saver. It is. <laughs> when you save one click for something repetitive over and over again, you Absolutely. can find a point, bang, and just and pop it right in there. And of course, you can always fine tune this stuff a little further down the road. Yes, right? absolutely. Um, it's it's you can of course get into all kinds of trimming, which we're not going to get into now. In fact, we'll the next lesson we'll do we'll do we'll do now trimming in the next episode. Okay. Yeah. Great, Steve. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, here we are learning Final Cut Pro 10 from the master trainer, Apple certified master trainer, Steve Martin. Uh, if you want the full scoop on the detailed training, 
There's a <laughs> tutorial at Ripple Training called Apple Pro Video yeah. Series Final Cut Pro 10. It's a complete 37 lesson tutorial with media. And it's like taking a course, online course with all the... RippleTraining.com, full training and available. Also, you can use it on your computer or, or your on, the, on the iPad uh, or just, you know, on your Mac, mm -hmm. on your PC. Yep, Mac, and PC. You want, on your Apple TV. Yep, on your Apple TV too. Fantastic. Great, Steve. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for watching Mac Break Studio.